Well, the Indian Space Agency is all set to launch Chandrayaan-3. Billions around the world are looking forward to India's space mission with much hope and anticipation. But before the launch takes place in just a few hours from now, let's try to understand why for all our achievements in space sector, landing on moon remains a challenging task. Moon, the Earth's lone natural satellite, has always been an enigma. Almost 50 years ago, humans first stepped foot on the lunar surface. This was NASA's Apollo 11 mission in 1969. Since that, there have been several missions. In total, 12 men have been to the lunar surface. But since 1972, no human has gone to the moon. Now there is a new moon rush. NASA is aiming to put humans back on the moon. And India is the latest to join the lunar odyssey. ISRO, which is India's space agency, is all set to explore the lunar surface with Chandrayaan-3. The mission will attempt a soft landing on the surface of the moon. But despite all these years of advancement in the space industry and for the feats achieved during the global space race, landing on the moon still remains an arduous task. But why? First, the journey is long, to be precise, 384,400 kilometers. So the chances of failure at any stage gets amplified. Second, the moon has an extremely thin atmosphere. Slowing down the speed of a spacecraft becomes a task. Thus, the vehicle relies on its propulsion system to adjust velocity. But this requires more fuel, making the spacecraft heavier, which in turn increases the need for fuel again. Now comes the problem of navigation. The spacecraft cannot depend on Earth stations to guide it during its descent, which in fact is the most challenging part of the lunar puzzle. So the computers on board have to make the subtle calculations during landing. It's a nail-biting moment, the grand finale of years of hard work, all depending on the final few seconds. And scientists remained glued to the screens, waiting for the signal. Remember, that could only come if the space vehicle makes a soft landing. So we at Weon wish bon voyage. May the force be with Chandrayaan 3. For more on this, we are joined live by our senior correspondent Siddharth MP from Sri Harikota, Andhra Pradesh, the launch site of ISRO's Chandrayaan 3. Siddharth, so much, uh, thank you so much for joining us and you have uh, comfortably placed yourself on this historic launch site. My first question to you, the lunar landing was unsuccessful in 2019, well, Chandrayaan, uh, the one that got launched then. So what is ISRO doing differently this time? Very good morning. So to start off with, uh, of course, 2019, what happened was there was an orbiter lander rover configuration that was flown to the moon. Everything went well until the, uh, you know, uh, combined spacecraft was just about two kilometers above the lunar surface on the verge of landing. And at that time, there were sensor errors, there were software errors, and there were a host of factors that led to the communication loss. And eventually, you know, the spacecraft crash landed on the moon. And that part of the mission, that is particularly the lander and the rover were completely declared lost. It is that that ISRO essentially wants to repeat this time around. So what ISRO has done differently is minimum of two years of testing on the new spacecraft that they've made. Of course, ISRO has uh, received lots of data from the orbiter of Chandrayaan uh, 2 and also ISRO has received uh, real amounts of data from what went wrong in the previous mission. So based on that, they've made several design changes. They've made structural changes and software changes to give you some specific information. So there are four landing legs that the Chandrayaan 3 orbiter stands on and that uh, uh, these are the legs that it will be landing on as well. So 
last time the landing legs uh, were of a certain strength but this time around they've been made so robust that even when they land at a speed of 3 meters per second they can withstand and then the uh, you know operations can be carried out thereafter in addition to that software changes have been made the software has been more tolerant towards failure and even the sensors advanced sensors have been in, uh, installed on board such that even if one of them or some of them fail you know all of the systems can still work flawlessly thereafter then there are also other changes um, in terms of uh, the software then there are also changes that isro has made in the overall design so earlier there were five engines on board uh, that spacecraft for the landing so particularly the vikram lander had five engines earlier but now the engines have been redesigned and just four engines are used because this time it's a heavier spacecraft so for soft landing they'll be using four engines so these are some of the significant design changes and this also means that the spacecraft or the orbit uh, lander particularly the vikram lander is slightly heavier than the last one because of the robustness that has been brought in this time around right now siddharth all these factors have been considered and i'm pretty sure weather is also been taken into account what role if at all does weather play in executing a successful launch yeah so weather in fact is a very crucial factor before executing a launch because uh, well at least a week ahead uh, any space agency will announce a launch date and when they do so they sort of foresee a lot of factors this includes weather most importantly and of course they also look at a precise launch time based on a science known as orbital mechanics so based on the destination so in this case chandrayaan 3 is headed for the moon so they prefer to land on august 23rd so it's in the early hours of august 23rd that isro is intending to do the luna soft landing so in order to accomplish that and in order to take the most energy efficient route to reach the near the south pole of the moon isro's idea is that the best shot will be to launch at 2:35 pm today but let's also tell you that weather plays a crucial role um, so launches technically happen when you know the weather is favorable favorable weather is anything when there's no thunder or lightning thunder and lightning is the major threat for any rocket launch because the crucial electronics on board and the sensitive systems on board uh, can uh, you know get disturbed and can dis get disrupted if there is si uh, significant thunder and lightning during the time of the launch so that is something that all agencies are wary of in addition to that even strong winds are a problem although it's not much of a problem for heavy vehicles like the lvm3 in addition to that even rainfall heavy rainfall is generally avoided although rainfall is not a major deterrent factor what happens is that um, in a rocket the flame is from within right there's fuel within so it's actually not affected by rainfall but if the rainfall is slightly heavy the space agencies prefer to defer the launch by a couple of minutes and uh, do so after that and isro has done that in fact in recent years a pslv launch at the last minute there was rain and the launch was put off by around 15 20 minutes and they launched after that so these are the common factors weather does play a role but as far as the weather in sri harikota today the skies are pretty overcast but it's also quite a bright day for uh, 7:15 a.m. right now and uh, it looks like things will go as per plan the countdown is underway so we are all gearing up for the launch at 2:35 correct so you did mention the countdown what is the current status of the countdown So the countdown began around uh, 1 p.m. yesterday. This is on Thursday afternoon that we are talking about. This is a 25 and a half hour countdown that we are talking about. So countdown is actually a very set procedure. What happens during a countdown is unique to every rocket. So each and every rocket that ISRO operates is unique in its own ways. The types of fuels used, the type of uh, payload it carries. There are so many factors that come into play. So as far as the LVM3 rocket is concerned, let's keep in mind that. Uh, isro has to follow certain procedures so in that 25 hour countdown what is done is uh, there are several health checks of all the vehicle systems that are carried out in the run up to the launch it's the electrical systems it's the softwares you know it's also the mechanical systems all of these are checked in multiple rounds the batteries the uh, electrical components the communications on board all of them are checked multiple times then um, of course uh, what happens is you know in the last few hours last 4 to 5 hours in the run up to the launch which is is very soon from now there will be a fuel filling so 
this rocket actually is powered by three types of fuel. Solid fuel is actually something that is pre-filled and kept. So you cannot fill solid fuel at the last moment. But the liquid fuels, just like we do in our vehicles, have to be filled before your journey. So what happens is that uh, the second stage of the rocket is filled with a, a liquid fuel. It's known as... Uh, unsymmetric dimethyl hydrazine and dinitrogen tetroxide. So this is the combination that the second stage of the rocket uses. And the third stage of the rocket uses cryogenic fuels, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. So these liquid fuels which are very harmful and also explosive. And in fact, the second stage fuel, UDMH and N2O4 we spoke about, is a carcinogenic fuel. It's a cancer-causing fuel when it comes in contact with humans. So at extreme care, such fuels have to be filled, explosive fuels have to be filled into the rocket. And we're talking about hundreds of tons of fuel. So that have to be filled into the rocket during the countdown. It's a very set procedure. So at every hour or every two hours, there's a milestone that the rocket will have to cross and the spaceport has set procedures to follow during this uh, countdown period. Right. Thank the you last so four much. hours of the countdown yeah. will be the most crucial because... Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you so much, that's when, you know, That was a very detailed and uh, a very in-depth report of what's happening on ground there. And we thoroughly enjoyed listening to it. And uh, we hope that you will keep bringing us these updates up ahead as well. Thank you so much, Siddharth, for joining us.